Got you. Got you. Okay. So it's 2023 now. Um, you got a long legacy in this game, obviously, and you breaking down just a small portion for us. Right. Is, is the pimping game as you knew it? Is it dead? You it's know, dead. you got. Go, hey, go ahead. It's dead. It's dead. It's, you know, the game is dead. You know, women are way more smarter. Like you know, you got to remember prior to pimp, so hold out America pimp. Wasn't no pimps on the TV. Wasn't no YouTube. So the the, the first relationship. But the first encounter with a pimp for most women was in real life. And, you know, the catch it come before the hanging. Before they know it, you know, they turned out. You know, now they could go in there, they could watch Pippi Ken all day, they could watch Bishop, they could look at this to all the pimps. So they could get the game before they even get with the pimp. So, and if you're a, a dude that got a little game, and if you ain't as sharp as a butcher knife, she gonna be like, I already know that. Get out of here. You, ain't, you can't teach me nothing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so the game... It's been distorted with books. It's a whole bunch of things that, you know, fuck the game up now. And then these women, you know, they got smartphones, meaning that they could do OnlyFans. They could go sit up in the Hyatt, you know, where it's a great protection at, and they could bring their tricks up there. They don't need a pimp to protect them like when they was on the track. They ain't got to worry about other pimps sweating them and other hoes say, get off the track if you're in with a pimp. Because now they got freelance, you know what I'm saying? They freelance, you know, and they're doing their own thing. And, you know, I mean, unless a woman really like a guy and it's, it's very seldom and she just really into him, you know, she probably keep the money herself. Now, and these women smart, they can give a dude, you know, they can call, they can meet a dude at the club and they can be partying. And they can say, yeah, we used to, oh, I bet the height. She can smoke weed with him, you know, he gonna fuck the shit out of her for nothing. He ain't gonna ask for no money, but she's a prostitute. He don't even know she's a prostitute because she's not enunciating that she's a prostitute. But she got enough money to buy, you know, an ounce, a zipper, you know, some zope, you know what I mean, and get this dude hot. They could pop some X pills. And, you know, he just think he's having fun. But if she was with a pimp, she couldn't do that. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's deep, you know. She can go buy her own Rolls Rovers and all that shit now. She don't need a man to, you know, say, I can get you these things. You know, the time has changed. And then the guys, you know, a lot of them don't have the game because a lot of things happen, you know. A lot of things happen, you know. What happened was, you know, uh, 1985, you had the, uh, the new sentencing laws. You know what I'm saying? You had the crack laws. And what they did is, you know, a lot of brothers and sisters, you know, watched New Jack City and uh, Scarface. And what they did, that created a culture of drug dealers. You know, we all wanted to be Scarface. We all wanted to be Nina Brown. But we didn't pay attention to the new laws, you know, the 85% laws with the feds. We didn't understand the trigger lock. We didn't understand the three strike law. So a lot of this created mass incarceration. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because America is 5% of the population, but 25% of the world's incarceration. Then you go back to uh, 1978, you had like 280,000 people in prison. Today, you got 2.5 million people in prison. And 51% of them are African-American. So that brought a lot of fathers out of the hood, you know, a lot of fathers out the home. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's nobody to discipline. So a lot of these young men were raised up under femininity. You know what I'm saying? They've been raised by a woman. So they have a lot of feminine characteristics. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so a lot of times they act more bitchy than the bitch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of them, you know, they're weaker than a woman. You know, so how can a, a dude with bitch tendencies tell a bitch to do anything when she can see that because she's a woman, you know, you know, when, when average dude when today, when he, you know, when he at home, his mama's in the mirror looking at her butt, you know, fixing her hair, putting her eyelashes on. So this is the image that he see, you know, kids are learned, you know, most of the things we learn we do as children, we learn from imagery, right? So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that imagery is not a good imagery for a male uh, a, a child, you know, that's going to grow up to be a man. And that's why you have a lot of homosexuality in our community, not by, you know, people saying they're born homosexuals, because, you know, when you create a lot of feminine characteristics, you can create this notion in your head of this psychosis that, you know, I was born a woman. You know, but no, you was raised by a woman, so you took a lot of woman characteristics. And then you got predators out there who would prey on those guys who have feminine characteristics, you know, who switch like their mama or act kind of feminine, right? And they uh, seduce them. You know, and generally, like Tyler Perry said, he was seduced. He said he was seduced. He said a man sucked his penis. 
That was his first ejaculation. That's his first experience with sex. So he started to like it because he didn't know a woman's side of it. You know what I'm saying? He only had a male side of it. And that can lead men into homosexuality. Or it could be, you know, a uh, different effect. It could have an adverse effect. It could be, you know, in order to be a man, I got to kill eight, nine dudes. You know what I'm saying? I got to, I got to fight. You know, I got to, you know, masculinity. You know, it's a thing they call uh, 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 something about masculinity. You know, what the toxic masculinity? Toxic masculinity, right? Mm -hmm. They talk about toxic mas. It, there's no such thing as toxic ma masculinity. Masculinity, and toxic don't go together. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't even call it toxic masculinity. Masculinity means you know, raising your children, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, teaching your children, you know, certain skill sets, you know, you got nurture versus nature. You know, a, a father nurtures his child, a mother nurtures her, their child. So, you know, certain characteristics, you know, what makes the, the lion, you know, the king of the jungle is not the fact that, you know, he's a lion, you know, or that he's ferocious or he's notorious because he said, when he roared, that roar, let everybody know and he's the king. When your father said, boy, shit your ass down. That Adam apple in the middle of his throat creates the fear in the child to let the child know that the feminine voice that his mother portrayed versus the masculine voice that his father portrayed is actually, you know, the difference between authority. You know, the other voice is more authoritarian. So, you know, this is absent, you know, and this is how you create a lot of the ills and problems in our society today. And then you even look at, you know, mass incarceration, you know, CCA, Correctional Corporation of America. You know, Correctional Corporation of America is on the stock exchange. You know, it's privatized prison. You know, so if you got hotels, you got to have occupants. Am I right? So that's what, you, that's what you see, mass incarceration. And that's where you see a lot of the problems in our society. And that's why you see a lot of women not respecting men. Somebody asked me a question. What's the problem with? Why women don't respect black men? It ain't that women don't respect black black men. Society don't respect black men. When you look at the the evening news, there's some brother in handcuffs. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you look at all the power positions, you know, you look at a European man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you look at you know some of the jobs that is given to African Americans, they're given to African American women. So man is black man is being continuously and a uh, 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 psychologically is through social engineer being minimized. You know, he's being minimized and he's being less of a factor because it's all boiled down to genetic annihilation and genetic survival. When you look at it genetically, you know what I'm saying, me, you know, that's why you see a lot of interracial white men now dating black women on television because their uh, reproduction uh, system is not working. And demographers predict that by the year 2050, you know, they'd be the minority, not the majority. You know, so they're now dating more black women just to preserve themselves. You know, they, they, it's all about survival. And then the black man is always targeted because when you look at the black man penis, that is the real weapon of mass destruction, says Francis Cress Wilson, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, in a book called The ISIS Paper. She speaks about that pretty eloquently. She talks about how if the black man was allowed to amalgamate with the European woman or any other ethnicity, we would wipe them out in the course of 30 years just through amalgamation. The baby would come out darker because the darker, says Mendel, who's a biologist, he said the darker genes are dominant and the lighter genes are recessive. You can get the recessive out of the dominant, but you can't get the dominant out of the recessive. So that's why black men are targeted, you know what I mean? And it's a form of male contraceptive. You know, every time you lock somebody up, you can't have babies. That's birth mm -hmm. control. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and you see that, you know, even in the welfare system, you know, they say that the man is no law, not allowed to live with the mother. So, so what you're saying, the child gonna grow up fatherless, you're creating a single parent uh, environment? Of course, you know, so it's a lot of things that creates the pimp whole relationship. It's a lot of things that create the, the, the male female relationship. It's not just one thing that's creating these prostitutes, that's creating these pimps, that's creating these situations. You know what I'm saying, me? You know, uh, the black man, you know, have to understand that uh, everything is based on reason. You have to be a thinker. A lot of us don't think. 
your, 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 your thinking faculties, your reasoning faculties and your emotional, emotional factory faculties is not in the same place. That's why when somebody kills somebody, they do, they kill them on impulse. You know, they say they snap because emotions should never supersede the judgment. You know, a, a temporary, a, 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 a temporary situation would cause a permanent effect. You know, how many brothers you know from your hood in the Bronx that they kill somebody? Well, all they needed was 10 seconds to say, man, they're going to be $10. You know, that ain't shit. You know, I go. That's go so pop- real. That is you know? so real. You know, but that's because emotions and reasoning. One is that, you know, your, 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 your reason is, is in your conscious level. Your uh, emotions is 95% of the thing we do is unconscious in your unconscious, subconscious level. So to give you an example of emotions, and reasoning, if if I was a hunter, right, and I had a, a shotgun, and I put that shotgun up to a, a ox, right? You know, ox is strong, right? Ox is strong as an ox. And that ox, he's gonna, he's not going to remove, he's not gonna move unless he hear a tree or you know, something strikes his emotions. He's gonna emotionally respond. He's gonna run off impulse, but he don't know that the gun is for to kill him and make him some oxtails. You know, he's gonna be some oxtails. He don't know that. But if I put the gun on you, you're gonna be like, shit, man, that nigga got a gun, run. You know, that's reasoning. You know, if you take a lion, we just talked about a lion, right? And you put a lion in a situation where you take a cow, cut the cow in half, and you put the cow in the cage, and you try to trap that lion in that cage, that lion don't have enough reasoning faculties to understand that it's a trap. He's going to go in there every time, go for the cow, and he's going to become a zoo animal. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying, me? But we have the ability to reason, but we don't reason. You know what I'm saying, me? We, we impulsive. You know what I'm saying? We move on impulse. And to give you an example, Sir Isaac Newton, who's a great scientist who came up with the theory of relativity and talked about the moon and the stars and gravity and everything, right? He was uh, in England in the 1800s. And it was a guy by the name of uh, uh, John Blunt. And so John Blunt, what he did, he came up with the C Company. And the C Company, you know, was similar to what Bernie Mur- Murdoch had. He was robbing Peter Pay Paul. It was a punchy scam. And people mm-hmm. was investing, 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 investing. The queen invested. All of the lawyers, everybody invested. Even one of the maids invested. And the maid who she worked for, one of these ladies, one of the ladies, she was sitting in the, in, in, in the general area. And the, and the maid was sitting up in the uh, in the bleachers in the VIP. And so she looked up, she said, how did you get up there? Well, I invested in John Blunt. He was just the talk of the town. So Sir Isaac Newton was like, hmm, he had 7,000 pounds. You know, he bought, he invested 7,000 pounds of English money. And, and they call it pounds in England. He, he invested 7,000 pounds into this company of John Blunt's. He made 21,000, a multiple of three. He said, wow. He said, man, I'm going to get out of here because he, uh, he came up with relativity. What goes up must come down. This was his theory, you know, which is a good theory. And, you know, so he was like, you know, I'm out. But the stock kept going up and he died back in. And he lost everything, he became impoverished at seven years old. And he said, I would never allow my emotions to supersede my intelligence. It was because of greed, emotional greed that I've lost my entire fortune. So we have to think, you know, and we got to focus. When I say focus, I'm talking about putting your eye in the keyhole and looking through that keyhole. Nothing else counts. You have, your peripheral is totally out the, out the question. Nothing's to the right, nothing to the left. You're just in that keyhole. And you don't see nothing but your purpose. And that's what you have to do. You have to look in that keyhole. You know, one of the techniques that I use to control my uh, focus is I, I count my breathing. Every day I count my breathing. And no matter where, where or when or how or, or where I'm at, I always wander into something else. The phone might ring. You know what I'm saying? If the phone don't ring, something else might happen. You know what I'm saying? But I'm always wondering. You know, I'm always wondering to something else. But then how I get focused is I say, go back to your breathing. So when I got something that I'm embarking on, like the hip hop fraternity, if you know somebody said, man, hey, we got this popping over here. We got that popping over there. Of course, it distracts me momentarily, but I always say, go back to the hip hop fraternity. You know what I'm saying? So these are techniques that I use to stay focused, you know, because we have to stay focused. If we don't stay focused, we're going to get lost in the sauce. You know, give you another example. 
it was this guy, he was a a country boy. You know, he didn't, you know, he didn't go to school, you know, all he could focus on was being a filmmaker, right? He had this insatiable appetite to be a filmmaker. Somebody from Hollywood discovered him and brought him out to Hollywood, let him work on a project that was successful, let him work on another project that was successful. And he made a lot of money. Then they told him, well, we want you to use Final Cut Pro. He said, I'm not using Final Cut Pro. He was so focused on doing it the way he wanted to do it that he didn't allow them to deter him. So eventually, you know, he wanted to make this movie. So he went off and he made the movie. The movie is called Star Wars. John Lucas, you know what I'm saying, who started Lucasfilm and the reason why we get Star Wars and why it's so successful because he refused to let anybody take him out of his focus. You know what I'm saying, me? Even though no one at that time was financing movies, it was idiotic. It was absurd to finance your own movie back in them days. But he financed his own movie and he had a belief, he had a dream and whatever the mind believes and conceives, it can achieve, you know, a win never quit and a quit and never win. Plan your work and work your plan. That's what John Lucas did. And that's how you come up with Lucas film. And that's why Star Wars, which we still watch to this day, is so successful. It's about being focused, you know. So, you know, yeah, you know, we have reasoning and we have impulse, you know, but your emotional uh, levels can be raised on different levels because it's called emotional question, emotional quotient, IQ. Just like that, you got EQ, you got IQ. IQ is intellectual quotient. EQ is emotional quotient. quotient. And there's different levels to that, you know what I mean? And, you know, it got to do with like empathy and stuff like that, you know, uh, reasoning. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, just different things, you know, how you feel uh, about something, you know, and you can control that, you know, you know, and you control it by judging everything by not, you don't judge things by uh, how you feel about it, but you judge things by what it costs you, you know. Gotcha. What you is, know, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Now, what what is the results of those actions? So, if you if, if you want to kill somebody, the way you control your emotions, say what is going to cost me. Every time you feel like making an emotional impulse, say what is going to cost me. And that's how you control your emotions. And a lot nah, of people, that's a, um, very very smart. Well said. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.